Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Borto anime review. This one's going to be for episode 277. This one mainly revolved around what the second test of um, this, uh, you know, uh, death game that they're playing here. The maze, as I suppose they're calling it. Um, this one mainly revolved around candles. So I'll go in, pick up a candle, it immediately lights and somehow through some sort of a jutsu or something like that or trickery the the candle that you're holding becomes your life the flame becomes your life so if it goes out you just die instantly it's not that like stuff in the room that they're in activates and kills you necessarily it just seems like you collapse somehow they never explained that and it obviously gets across that there's either some sort of a crazy um, jutsu thing going on or some weird technology that we don't particularly uh, know about yet. Um, I'm guessing it's probably some sort of a thing where because they were brought in like unconscious that he probably has something in them that he can activate to kill them that we might get to the end of, of like oh you need to get some sort of an implant or something like that out so that the game of deaths, especially those type of ones where it seems kind of weird how he kills them, um, you can get get around them that way. Um, this one, again, they're, they're, they're quickly narrowing down the cast. They're, they're getting rid of basically all of the characters who are not like inherently interesting. So in this episode, we ultimately got rid of most of the non-shinobi characters to the point where what we only have like one non-shinobi left i think and that's the the guy with the briefcase um who is interesting because he has a, a briefcase which in itself is a mystery of some sort um so we're we're left with uh, yeah, yeah. What well, Boruto, uh, Shamo, the kind of like nervous, not very confident ninja, Yatsume, who seems to be the most sort of like Boruto in terms of leaning in the direction of everyone wanting to work together. We have Kisaru, who's apparently a Konoha ninja. Um, who else do we have here? Again, I have the names up here. Looking at them, we have a uh, Namua, who's the sort of bald monk guy, who also seems, for the most part, out for to help everyone. Uh, Bata is is a character. Uh, she's the shinobi who works for hire and is um, helping the guy with the briefcase. She obviously had her moment in this episode where she had like two moments, of course. One was probably the one where she felt like the most like, oh, I'm not doing anything except to help my client. And then she was put into a situation where to do that, she had to do something that she didn't really want to do. So it seems like she... I guess fought those two um, non-shinobi characters and had to kill them to basically get their candles or something along those lines. Um, and it seems like she's going to be, I guess, a little bit changed after this, seeing what happened there. Um, we also have uh, yeah, Fufugo's name of the guy with the briefcase. And then uh, Rokuro is the uh, escaped uh, prisoner who also seems to be very, very skilled. So <clears throat> he seems to just want to go ahead, get through everything, and he will do what needs to be done. He just straight up um, puts out one of the candles of the, the girl who was sort of leading Shamo on and basically manipulating him. Her um, turn happened a little kind of like abruptly, kind of bluntly. I think you knew it was coming because... They were leaning so heavily into the, like, she's, like, over-flirting with him to sort of keep him on her side. And then just a simple thing of, like, you know, you know, she basically has him working for her the whole time. And it's just she refuses to help him up that kind of, um, uh, kind of rock kind of uh, face uh, when he helped her up. And it's just, like... <clears throat> she'll get like a couple of minutes like head start just to avoid helping him up and so she then attaches herself to Rakuro but he just puts her candle out and so that's the end of her there the the kind of shocking death in this one was actually the the woman with the who, who's the only one who had water left just that um 
at the end, she notices that Borto was the one who sort of helped them through the, the kind of initial stage of things by working together to protect all of the candles from the, the, the dust storm. So right as she's about to give the water, she dies because her candle goes out because she was standing too close to in that room. There was basically kind of like a furnace or something like that, keeping the room really, really hot. So um, her candle burned out quicker than other people. And that was the like, oh, wow, that just happened quite suddenly. But it was actually pretty good setup for the, the second stage of this. They get out of the big arena room and they go into... Um, just a room with two elevators and they meet um <clears throat> they meet Oka again and he uh, a few of them are already there because of course the people who actually helped other people arrive late so they've chosen one elevator and then the other people basically get put in the other elevator and so the trick here is that both elevators are going to the surface just very very slowly so slowly that if they just wait, all of their candles will go out. So the kind of, the trick here is ultimately um, either what you have to do is you have to steal other people's candles so that I suppose you can basically transfer your kind of flame. When your candle goes out, you just transfer your flame to another candle and it's now yours because the rules are that um, it's not just that literally that exact flame on that candle is yours. It's you can actually take another person's candle and you know m m maneuver it over. So, um, in one elevator, you of course have the people who just take advantage of the other people, <clears throat> and so they get out by doing that. Rikuro kills people, and Bata is forced effectively to kill people, and she seems changed because of it. So we'll see what they do with her going forward, if she maybe more joins the likes of Borto, Yatsume, and so on in you know progressing here um in the other elevator there's kind of talk of like what do we do you know they they also figure out that oh this is kind of i think what he's he's wanted to do but initially it's kind of brought up do we just do a sort of the fairest kind of type thing of just whoever's candle like is about to kind of run out kind of last minute we sort of hand it over or something like that and it's like no 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 we can't do that so Borto ends up coming up after a bit of the discussion kind of happens like they come up with the idea that oh yeah what if we just kind of they take the approach of fully leaning into the idea of the way the rules work it's not really about like any individual flame it is specific sort of to the candle so what if we just all claim sort of one candle that way we could put all of the wax of all the candles together into it. And so it will last a really, really long time. And we all survive. And it's just it's all holding on to the one candle. And so they get through. And basically it's the massive contrast between the rise of the elevator. Between the team who actually worked together and those who didn't. And it seems like, you know, that's going to be the case for quite a bit. And we're sort of just wondering like, okay, what is going to be the thing that maybe puts them, puts Borto specifically, I suppose, into a situation where there isn't a clever solution to not have to resort to something kind of more extreme, where uh, you have to put other competitors at risk because there's, uh, what, three uh, challenges left. So, you know, we're, we're expecting this group to get whittled down gradually and we'll see what happens. Now, the way they've been sort of doing this so far is that it does seem like almost anyone who has done anything kind of wrong so far is going to get taken out. So I do get the impression that the likes of sort of maybe Bata and Rokuro might end up going down. Um, and if they if they are destined to be characters who do die in this, I'd say probably the best way to do this would probably be to have sort of Bata maybe like sacrifice herself and she maybe is the one who manufactures the downfall of Rockero in all of this and so those two get taken out of the equation and that for the most part would leave like most of the you know reasonable people left uh, Shamo, Yatsume, Kisaru I suppose there is some questions around because he was a bit kind of um I suppose in each episode so far he's had one moment that you're kind of like huh 
like the random uh, rope bridge that uh, rope ladder that he made in the last episode was kind of like wait, wait wait what you just had this prepared um and then he was the one in the good elevator to maybe bring up the idea that they might have to do what the other elevator did he kind of tried to bring it up in a in a better way but he was still the one i think to bring it up well, fundamentally so there's that um namua seems good so far but it sort of feels like he's maybe positioned in that position that he's going to to die at some point so we'll see what happens with him the preview sort of lingered on him a little bit like uh kind of uh, on the ground um we'll, we'll see if they do anything with that uh, and then the guy with the briefcase it's sort of like well all we really care about is the briefcase so it's, it's more like it's just the character and it's more like what he's carrying and what exactly that's about um did the episode really give us any hints as to who oka is because we did see some scenes with sarda and mitsuki investigating this because of course they're investigating that borta has been missing for days so they end up finding the uh, <clears throat> Thunder Train conductor guy who was the one who put them on track to go into uh, the uh, tunnel that got them captured. Um, now, the result of this is that they follow that guy, he gets himself blown up in the cave, but they sort of are now at least on the right track. They sort of know the direction, roughly, that Borto was heading in and that something has happened where it's like someone was paid off to make this happen um so that's going to be an interesting one to see what happens because obviously i'd like to see sarada and mitsuki get used a little bit but i i perhaps don't want to see that be maybe them somehow join the game right at the end um just because I, I like that the setup is here and i'd like to see the resolution amongst these characters and then maybe when they get out or when they kind of win basically but maybe there's a twist at the end maybe that's when Sarda and Mitsuki come in and uh, arrive to save the day there is still the thing of like is is this arc in any way connected to the whole falcon thing and the you know animal amusement park or whatever it was um we, we, we'll see about that but again the the uniqueness of Oka is that he does seem to have these crazy obviously like high tech stuff he seems to have some sort of a like either jutsu powers or just tech that allows him to just kill people in, in any sort of situations. So pretty interesting stuff uh, overall. Um, and just to get across that, yeah, I think overall this arc has been pretty good. Like, yes, you know, a lot of characters, a lot of characters who aren't really staying around for more than an episode or two. Um, but it's also good to sort of do stuff like this where, yeah, this character is only going to have a very minimal arc where they do something, maybe get killed, and it's meant to be this sort of like maybe satisfying death because that character was awful, or a tragic death because that character actually did something good, but still got taken out. And I'm interested to see what they they do going forward because like I th it seems like Yatsume is being set up as kind of maybe like one of the most notable of the remaining characters, um, and that like she almost feels like she has the potential to go in the same direction as Boruto. But they haven't really done much with her just yet. So we'll, we'll see where they go with this. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, otherwise, the preview didn't really suggest all that much. Like it, they said musical chairs. So that obviously gets across the idea that every game is going to force a situation where someone has to die. So like I said, of the remaining characters, it feels like Okay, there, there's one or two who kind of stand out as probably needing to go eventually. But when we get down to, like, let's say, Borto, Yatsume, Kisaru, Bata, Shamo, or something like that, who are they taking out? Um, like I said, Bata is maybe an option just because she was acting bad earlier on. Will they do some sort of a weird redemption thing with her? We'll see. But um, interesting enough. So... Solid episode, but in the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on this one. Well, that's been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.